Behind the Brand takes an inside look at the people that are making things happen. From up and coming entrepreneurs to the big guys, we show you how they go about their business. Meet the innovators with the know-how and vision to succeed. Get Behind the Brand. I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today we're here with Justine Azarek, also known as iJustine, web celebrity and YouTube star. Justine, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Justine, how did you get this job? Um, I mean, yes, I hate to say it's a job because it's so much fun and most people, I think, strive to have a job that they really enjoy. But as far as, you know, how I got this, um, I made my first website when I was in sixth grade. And ever since then, I've just been super passionate about technology and design. And when I started doing video production, no one ever wanted to be in my videos. So I started filming myself and editing and I started putting this stuff online and people started watching it. You went to school for this, right? I did, yeah. I went to uh, multimedia at PTI. So you're sort of a graphic designer, you have an arts background, mm -hmm. you're very creative. I love every aspect of that. I do my, all of my own production, all of my own editing. Um, most of the design stuff that you'll see on my sites and everything is it's pretty much something that I've created. How many channels do you have? I probably have like eight YouTube channels. I have five main ones. Um, what are they? Um, I Justine, which is my main YouTube channel where I do edited content. Other I Justine, where I post sort of behind the scenes content. I Justine's iPhone, where I post videos from my iPhone. I Justine Reviews, where I do technology reviews, gadget reviews. And a new channel, I Justine Gaming, where I play video games and talk over top of my gameplay. What time is it? Failure time. No! It is not failure time. It is freaking get this block over there. Yeah, you're a big gamer, right? I love it. I'm not the best gamer in the world, but I have a good time and I love it, which I think is, is kind of the whole point of playing video games. You just hit a million subscribers. I did An on YouTube. An incredible number. Yeah, it was huge. And actually this past week I went and did a zero gravity flight and that was kind of my million subscriber celebratory video. Cool. So, what, what was that all about? Uh, so this plane goes into the air, it flies in parabolas, and as it's going down you're weightless for about 30 seconds. Oh, like the astronauts then? Yes. Okay. It is pretty much the most amazing thing ever and it's a pretty expensive flight so I was lucky enough to find a really awesome sponsor and they covered all of the costs of everything so. Wow, did you have like a flight suit and mask, the whole thing? I did, which was kind of crazy. I had like a flight suit, I didn't have an oxygen mask, but you did have a flight suit. Yeah. Um, and then Caboodles was the sponsor for this project. So I like put my space suit in my Caboodles and put all my makeup and I went to space. Mm -hmm. And did you post that online? It's not up yet, but depending when you watch this video, it most likely it will be online already. Okay, awesome, I can't wait to see that. Oh, that's so fun. And then uh, let's talk about the aggregate. How many total views? I know it's about 300 million or it might be over 300 million. I mean, it's, it's super hard to keep track because I have videos not only on YouTube, and I have like eight different channels, yeah. but I've posted stuff on MySpace, on Yahoo, on Viddler, and all these other, you know, websites that, that host video. So it's so hard to aggregate all of those views. So let's touch on that. So who is your audience? My core demo on YouTube specifically is like 12 to 17 year old girls, which is kind of crazy. Cause usually people are like, oh, it's just a bunch of guys watching your videos. And actually, no, it's mostly tech savvy little girls. And, and then um, is there like a secondary, I mean, does it? Uh, it is, I mean, it's the, it's, that's the largest demographic and then it's, uh, I think like 17 to like 24 and it's, it's fairly even male and female. And does, you know, your gamer channels, are they mostly guys who are gamers? The gaming mm -hmm. channel is definitely a little more male, but it is cool to see since I'm not like a professional gamer, like most of the YouTube channels, most of the commentary on YouTube is, um, it kind of has a different, I think, demo. People that don't take it as seriously. So there are some girls in there that are like, yeah, we're girl gamers, and most of them are better than me, so. I'm playing combat because I don't feel like sitting around. Oh gosh, what did you do? Why did you find me? Sadly. <laughs> so do you consider yourself kind of a role model for these girls? I, mean, I think so because I try to keep all of my content clean and you know I definitely want them to feel like you know it's, it's okay to like video games, it's okay to like technology, it's okay to be dorky. Yeah, you, um, I mean, it's sort of endearing. I think, 
you do have kind of a, a, a squeaky clean image, and I, I haven't heard you use bad language, mm -hmm. and and you know, you, it seems like you try to avoid the kind of content that would not be cool with the moms of the kids who are watching. Yeah, and it's, it's hard too, because I mean, every once in a while, you know, I'll, I did, I slipped up a couple years ago and I said the S word on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother called me and she's like, I don't like your spicy language on Twitter. <laughs> so what, your grandma has Google alerts? Actually, she does have Google alerts. No way, that is so yes. rad. Um, not only does she have Google Alerts, she has Twitter, she has Facebook, she has Daily Booth, and she also creates like an archived print version of all of my online adventures. So from every video that I post, to all of my TV appearances, to anything that shows up in Google Alerts, she is on it. What are some of your favorite videos, the ones that you've made? Oh boy, I've made so many. Um, I have a series called Ask IJ that I do where people ask me questions and yeah. I answer them, and I sort of answer them. <laughs> So this is going to be a special Ask IJ episode. This is going to be an Ask IJ on location. Oh, is this like a field trip or something? I'm so excited. Um, so that's a super fun series for me because it's very interactive. And I think that's what makes watching YouTube videos different than watching TV. It is interactive. When I ask people to comment, they comment and I read those comments. And I can use those in a future episode. So it's, it's like interactive TV. It is, yeah. yeah, except it's online, or it could be on your TV, depending on how you're watching it. Yeah, I mean, not, not too distant future, it's gonna be like that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many Google TVs, and even with like Samsung, they have built-in you know, YouTube widgets where people are watching us on TV. You did some sort of choose your own ending video series, right? I did, I've done a few interactive videos, and those are super interactive, just using YouTube's annotations. Mm -hmm. I did one for Halloween, where you went to different YouTubers' houses, so it was kind of like a fake trick or treat. I'm like, which house do you wanna to go to? And you can click, go to the house, and then you can return back to the original video. Before we get into the adventure, I need you guys to make us a video response of what it would be like if we came to your house and went trick or treating. What would we find? So basically, all you guys have to do is click on a house that you wanna go trick or treating in, there may or may not be some surprises. Shh. Okay. Right. Get now, with YouTube's parameters, you can only have a link back to another YouTube video, right? Yes, and I think if you pay, you can actually have links sent outwards, but I think that's like a, a premium type thing, which, yeah, I'm gonna stick with the YouTube ones. So are you monetizing this somehow? Are you making a living from this? Is it supporting you at least to, you know, pay for your equipment or your time or your talent? Yeah, definitely, and it's it's cool because with the partner program, you get a portion of the ads that run on your YouTube videos. And I also work with a lot of different brands. I've worked with like Intel, GE, Caboodles, um, just tons of different brands that have been amazing to work with, and they've sponsored my videos. And for me, you know, working with a sponsor is is great. But you know, you get all these inquiries about people who are like, hey, put this in your video. And I only work with brands if it's a brand that I really, really like. So kind of like a, tra a traditional product placement style of marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are your business goals? What's the plan? It's so hard to plan in this, this sort of a space. I mean, if I would have planned to do any of this stuff, I probably wouldn't have done this. I mean, I went to school for graphic design and, and video editing, and I was working at a chiropractor actually doing video editing. Wow. And on the side, because I was a really fast editor, uh, when I was done editing, I would start shooting like silly little videos in the office and posting them online. And then finally, I was getting so much online attention that I was able to quit my day job and I had enough clients to do freelance. Was this something that you always wanted to do? Um, I don't think it was something that I always wanted to do. I mean, I knew I always wanted to do something different and working your typical nine to five job wasn't something that, that I really wanted to do and sit in an office. But now I guess I kind of sit in my room and work nonstop, so, yeah. but I enjoy it. And it's something that I really love to do. And so I think that makes the big difference. And why did you choose LA? The weather, it's amazing. Um, I spent a lot of time in San Francisco as well because I'm super into technology and there's so many startups there. But, you know, LA is, the weather is just, it's perfect. And this is kind of yeah. where the entertainment business is as well. It's interesting, all these little hotbeds, right? New York, San Francisco, Austin. But LA is still kind of, you know, like the entertainment capital of the world, right? It definitely is, which is kind of crazy because a lot of the YouTube partners have moved here. There's So LA seems to be now the hotbed of of all of the the YouTube content creators. So you're more of a digital expert and entertainer, right? I think so, and whenever people are like, what are you, like what do you do? I've been starting to say I'm an internet personality yeah. for a lack of better terms. Yeah. Because um, I definitely, when I started doing this, it was more I was into just technology, so I kind of came from 
sort of the tech side and the social media side into the entertainment world. And it's interesting because a lot of these actors and actresses out here in LA are trying to now do what all of us YouTube people have already done. And you're branching out, like you're doing more and more things. Like um, you were just on a recent episode of a hit TV show, right? Yeah, Criminal Minds. Yeah. It, was, it was last year, but it was so much fun. And I also did Law & Order the year before, too. So. How cool is that? It was awesome because, I mean, those are two of my favorite shows, and I love sort of the crime drama. Oh, okay, I didn't know that about oh, you. Oh, yeah, and I actually tweeted the casting director of Law & Order to get on the show. Wow. And what do you know? It, it happened to work. Use Twitter. You reached out to them. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to, to get on their radar? It took me a few tweets, but it happened that their casting director, Jonathan Strauss, actually had seen one of my videos previously, so, uh, so he was familiar with sort of my work. And everyone there was amazing because they let me go you know, to the set, film, post stuff online. Yeah. So I'm here in the morgue, and today is my last day on the set, and right now there's, I have a little stand in here. We look like twins. Where was Oh, hi. I was just taking a little nap here. It kind of was like, you know, it was great because they were putting me on the show, which is super exciting. But it was also very, very exciting for my audience because they got to see sort of all the behind the scenes. Stuff that they don't necessarily, you know, get to see anywhere else. Yeah, it's a match made in heaven. So it's a great message for teens because, you know, if you start one thing and then decide to do something else, you can just, you can live the dream. You can do what you want to do, right? Yeah, I definitely think it's a message to anyone. Like, if you want to do something, you just need to find a way to make it happen. And yeah. with the internet, it makes it a lot easier. How do you want to be perceived by other people? I'm just a person and I like to have fun. So I think my whole brand is sort of, a, sort of a technology meets entertainment. Um, but again, you know, I'm just a normal girl doing what I love to do. Yeah. And I think that's a good message to anyone. You know, I mean, again, if you want to do something, just do it. Is this part of your long-term plan? I think so. When people are like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I'm doing it right now. I mean, I know there's so much more that can be done, but I don't like to plan things because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, someone yeah. can come through the door with some crazy offer, and I'm like, this is great. Let's do it. Do you want to do more acting? Yeah, definitely. The acting is really fun, um, but I definitely would only want to do a show that allows me to film the behind-the-scenes stuff because if I can't, then... I mean, I'm leaving my audience behind. And if they can't come with me, then it's like, I don't want to do it. Yeah. So, How about a show about singing? Yeah, like maybe American Idol because I'm the best singer in the world. <laughs> you sing constantly. All you little tweets on Twitter streets. Never leave a tweet deck, tweet, tweet, tweet. I do. You I have a decent voice. You know, I mean, it's, it's not the worst voice in the world, but it's definitely not the best. Um, I mean, I record all of my own audio stuff just in my bedroom yeah, using I a mean, little tiny microphone and garage band. <laughs> So tell us about the dancing. Yeah, uh, if you think my singing's great, you should see my dancing. I've seen it. Oh boy. It's cute. <laughs> Let me get my music. Um, it, it's fun. I mean, it really is fun. And I think I'm not a good dancer, so it kind of gives people I guess maybe that extra little bit of motivation to, it's okay to make a fool of yourself. Yeah, you're a free spirit, you're comfortable in your skin. Yeah. Um, did you actually try out for Dancing with the Stars? I made a, a video about it, but they didn't pick me this season. So. What's, what's up with that? I don't know, I feel like since Heinz Ward was on this season, they didn't want to have two Pittsburghers, so maybe next season. Okay. But I'm ready, I'm ready Dancing with the Stars. You do a lot of these parodies and, 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 and fun music videos. The parodies are really fun because it's usually taking a popular song that most people have already heard and kind of putting my sort of social media spin on it. Yeah. Wake up in the morning feeling like Steve Jobs. Grab my MacBook, I'm out the door. I'm gonna hit this city before I leave. Brush my teeth with an iPhone app. Cause if you didn't know, there is an app for that. Most of them are about something like Apple product, like an iPhone or an iMac or uh, something about Twitter. So for me, it's, it's pretty fun. You're hilarious. I mean, so you're funny, you're kind of dorky, you're proud of that. Um, you're just totally comfortable in your skin, aren't you? I definitely am. Definitely a proud dork, which is yeah. kind of funny because when I was in high school, I didn't go to my junior prom. I went to a LAN party, so that's always a, a fun story to, to tell people. So I looked at your videos, and the music parodies seem to get the most views. Is there a strategy behind that? I know you did one, you know, a Bruno Mars parody. I think there definitely is a little SEO going on there because yeah. um, it definitely helps because people are searching for that. 
and they happen to fall upon one of your music videos and they're like, wow, okay, this is really funny or wow, this is really bad. Yeah. So it can lead to you know a lot of positive reaction or it can actually lead to a lot of negative because when people are searching for this actual video, they get really angry because they end up finding yours and then that leads to a lot of hateful comments. Okay, so this is good maybe for, for the business owner, back to sort of the business aspect. A lot of our viewers are small business owners and entrepreneurs, so what can you tell them about how to make successful videos that will get the most views? I think that's what everyone wants. I think it really depends you know, what their long-term goal is. I mean, if you're looking to build a community on YouTube, creating consistent content, talking about things that are topical, um, you know, things that people actually care about or are searching for is stuff that you want to create your content around. And of course, it's something that you're passionate about and it's something that other people want to watch. But what's the real secret? We want to know the secret sauce. What can you share? I mean, for me, it is really building a community of people because when I want to release these other videos that I have down the road, you know, that community of people is there to watch that content. So if I keep creating this consistent content that people want to watch. I'm hungry. I want some pizza. I'm going to order some pizza. Hi, I'd like to place an order for delivery, please. That circulates throughout YouTube and you know, you begin to get this community of people that want to see your content and want to keep watching. Okay, so it is about running a marathon, not a sprint. You just gotta do the work. It is, and I think a lot of people have this confusion between viral videos and videos that have a lot of views because these people have a community behind them that want to watch them. So the term viral video is sometimes misused, even yeah. for a lot of my stuff. They're like, oh, that went viral. I'm like, no, I have a million subscribers, so those people subscribe to see this content. And I think what's interesting about my subscribers also is some of them subscribe only for music videos. Some of them subscribe only to watch Ask IJ episodes and some only subscribe for another show that I do called Vlog University. Hello everyone and welcome to Vlog University. Now for those of you who are new to the show and aren't quite sure what Vlog University is, I created this because one of the top questions that I get is Justine, I wanna make videos, but I don't know what to make videos about. And some subscribe for whatever else. So, you know, you have these people that subscribe for a certain type of content. So, you know, you're exploring all these new things, maybe thinking about new pro projects. Do you get typecast at all? Um, I think so. I mean, sometimes, usually when people watch my videos at first, they do automatically think, oh, it's just a bunch of guys watching your videos. But it's, it's not, you know, it, it is this younger audience. Um, and I've been trying to sort of, you know, grow that audience. I host a tech segment on GTTV on Spike, and, you know, I do talk about tech reviews and stuff like that. So, I mean, a lot of people do want to pigeonhole me into sort of the tech world, but... Yeah, but Spike Channel is for guys, right? It is, but my most yeah. my audience is mostly girls. So, so kind of extending that into sort of, hey, I guys, it's cool. I, I make videos on YouTube too, so you can come and watch. So you're, you're one of the most diehard Apple fans out there. You've been doing it forever. Has Apple ever reached out to you, given you any kind of support at all? Um, no, actually. Apple corporate really has never said, hey, thanks for all of your support. But I must say, most of the Apple retail stores, everyone is super supportive. I don't know if you guys know, but I, I do dance in a lot of Apple stores. Mm -hmm. So, um... I dance in Apple stores all across the United States and most recently I was in Orlando and I just walked into the store and a lot of the employees had actually watched my videos. Mm -hmm. So they were so excited that I was there. And was this were, to get the white iPhone? It was to get the white iPhone. Nice. Yes. Um, so everyone there was super supportive and you know it's really cool to see the employees that really you know appreciate um, my love for Apple even if the corporate headquarters doesn't. Well, you're, you're very generous and humble to, to mention the high points, but how do you feel about that? Don't you feel snubbed? I mean, it kind of sucks because people think that Apple gives me all of my stuff for free. Yeah. They, they don't. They've never so much as given me you know, an iTunes gift card. But, um, you know, I mean, I love the products and I'm going to continue to talk about them as long as I do like them. But who's to say Microsoft isn't going to come out with a super awesome phone? And if the phone's better, I mean... My loyalty is to whatever product is better. So Microsoft has taken care of you, right? Have they ever reached out to Actually, you? Actually, for... Microsoft has been super responsive, and they've been really great. Bill or Steve give you a call? I mean, you know, Bill, we, we talk all the time. No, <laughs> but um, like the Xbox team has been great. Um, and yeah, they've been amazing. And I've even done a few projects with Bing as well. And they're great. I want to talk about failures. 
there's such a stigma attached to failures, and it's been said that, you know, if failure is not an option, then neither is success. So have there been any do-overs, anything you'd do differently in your career, your life up to this point? As far as do-overs, I don't think there's anything specifically that I would do over. I know there's some videos that I probably would have put a little more time into or done something differently as far as that, but you definitely learn from it. And especially, you know, with such a mass audience and all of these people leaving comments, you learn so much from them. So you definitely learn when you post a bad video. You're like, crap, I wish I would not have posted that. But you learn from it. And when you build this community of people that love and respect you, they let you know what you should do differently. And it's, it's cool because you learn from them as well. So how does that motivate you? And how do you filter through all these negative comments? It is really hard because a lot of the comments that you get from people that just randomly surf on your videos yeah. are super, they can be super negative yeah. or they can be super supportive. But yeah, if you want to get depressed, just go to any YouTube video and just look at <laughs> ten, the first 10 comments and you're like, wah, wah, wah. Just yeah, like you're done. It's, it's definitely hard, but the comments that hurt the most are the ones that are like, Justine, this isn't your best video. I like all of your other ones, but this one, not so good. So those are the type of comments that, you know, really, I think, are worse than sort of the terrible negative things that people say about you. Yeah, so does that motivate you then to do better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely does because you learn from what they like and what they don't like. And that's one reason that I have started so many different YouTube channels. People complain that I have so many channels, but some people don't like video games. Some people don't like my one take videos. So I wanna be able to have this option of whatever you want like you can find it on one of these channels. You know, I think that's a good message for business owners. You know, listen to what the people want and give them what they ask for. It's perfect. Yeah, you definitely have to listen and being where they are is super important. So some people might not even know that you have a blog. So you need to make sure you post stuff to YouTube, post it to your Facebook and be active on all of these communities. So you're sharing it across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what are the platforms that you like? I mean, I mostly use Twitter, Daily Booth, Facebook, and then I blog also at iJustine.com where I post pretty much all of my content that's everywhere else. You can find it there as well. Talk to us about the equipment you use. Is it all high-tech, heavy-duty, expensive stuff? You know, it's not super high-tech. Most, actually, my most viewed music video I shot on a little tiny PowerShot Canon camera and a $12 IKEA green screen. Um, I've definitely upgraded since, but... You wait, wait, can... you say IKEA green screen. IKEA doesn't sell oh, green screens. Oh, I'm sorry. Screens. I didn't mean a green screen. I meant a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I turned this blanket into a green screen, and I actually still use that right now. That's awesome. So... You know, improvising, um, yeah, using... Yeah, it's, it's definitely using what you got. And on YouTube, it doesn't have to be super high quality. I think one of the most important things, though, is audio. Because if people are watching this video and they can't hear you, it's super frustrating because a lot of people are listening to this stuff either in headphones or on their computer speakers. Right. So having good audio and good lighting, I think, is one super important thing. So what do you use and recommend? Um... For my, I have a Canon Vixia that I have like a shotgun microphone and then I recently upgraded, thanks to YouTube actually, they gave a YouTube grant out to some of their top partners. So I was able to purchase uh, like wireless microphones and stuff like that. So uh, it's great that YouTube is super supportive of all of their content creators. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So you're friends with some pretty high profile innovators, some of these social media elite. Who do you respect? One person that I really respect in this space is kind of a crossover, you know, from actor to social media expert is Ashton Kutcher. I mean, he has done so much from, you know, just acting to being in this space with social media. I mean, he's He really a huge, seems to get it. Yeah, he's a huge advocate of, of everything online. And I know some of his movies he's even promoted just through, like, uh, Twitter and Facebook and, and using online media. So it's, it's amazing to see what he's done with it. Who else? How about Tony Shea? Tony from Zappos, yes. Uh, he's actually probably one of my huge inspirations because what he's done with Zappos and Amazon and everything like that is he's really, you know, wants people to know that customer service is most important. And I think you can take that into anything. You know, for making YouTube videos, not necessarily are they customers, but they're their viewers. And you want to be responsive and you want to be there for them. Yeah. And I think that's a great lesson from Tony. Who's on your must-meet list for business or just for fun? I mean, I must meet Steve Jobs. I mean, let's be real. I'm a huge fan, so one day this needs to happen. Redemption. And he's probably going to be like, go away. Actually, a funny story. I did go to the Apple Cafe or Mac Cafe when I went to visit a friend. And Steve Jobs, we made eye contact because he was sitting diagonal from me. We made eye contact. He grabbed all of his stuff and literally ran away. So 
I don't know if he was a little scared, but yeah, sorry. So where do you think connected TV and interactive TV is going? I think it's going to be amazing, especially for all of us YouTube content creators, because people who are used to getting our content you know, on YouTube can also get it on their TV set. And then people who don't necessarily watch YouTube at all, they'll be able to watch us on TV. So I think it's going to be a really big game changer, because even for kids now, they don't necessarily know what they're watching on YouTube. They'll watch a clip of me, and then they'll watch a clip of some TV show, and to them, it's the same thing. My final question is, you know, what's something that no one knows about you? Superpower, secret talent, what have you got? Um, I mean, I feel like I definitely would love to do more acting. I mean, doing a movie or doing, you know, a TV show or something like that would be, would be fantastic. But also another little secret note that some, only a few people know is I can juggle. Really? Actually, yes. I'd like to see that. Uh, I've probably got something here. Oh, here's uh, some pens. Yeah, let's markers. try this. All right. <laughs> These are a little hard to juggle. <laughs> but you get the point. Well, thanks so much for spending a little bit of time with us. Really enjoyed meeting you and talking to you more. Thanks for having me. This was awesome. Good luck with all your projects, and we expect big things from you. Thanks. Feel free to tweet me. <laughs> we'll catch you on YouTube.